I'm David Ryan Harris, uh, from Atlanta, Georgia, live in LA. Um, it's a legendary. <laughs> <laughs> I had a guitar, a Strat, like I, coming up, Hendrix was huge for me and I always wanted a Strat and I finally saved up money and I bought this, uh, bought this Strat and it got stolen about 20 years ago. And uh, I've had tons of Strats since then, but none that I really had any sort of connection with. I could just never kind of find that vibe. And so um, you suggested, I think, that I get together with Dave Brown um, and just sort of pick out the neck and the, you know, the body and sort of spec out a guitar. And went and did that. He was really great helping me, you know, pick out the wood and the pickups and, you know, really listen to all of the little quirky things that I wanted. And I, I love it. It's, uh, I call it Simone. My wife's name is Sloan, but I call her Simone. Uh, so this is this is my Simone. It's 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 amazing. I mean, there's just tons of little things. Like it's got the graduated pole pieces here, uh, uh, machine heads like the I saw on the the Eric Johnson Strat, which I think is really really cool. To not have to have the string tree. I've got the um, uh, the bridge pickup has the the tone pot wire to it. Um, the weight is really good. I like a you know sort of fat neck. It's like all of the things that that I love about you know, playing a playing a strat. You know, it's 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 got it all. It's super super solid. Um, I just love it. It's just great knowing the the level of craftsmanship that goes into a custom shop guitar. Like I feel, there's some guys that are sort of you know vintage purists, and they want you know uh, they want they only want vintage guitars. I really kind of get off on the idea that I have a guitar that I'm the it's it's only got. I'm the only guy that's going to put mojo on it other than the person that built it. And I don't, you know, I don't get hung up on it being a vintage thing. You know, part of the vintage thing is what it plays like and feels like. I don't really care about the cachet of having, you know, a vintage guitar. So the custom shop thing gives me all of that. And I know I took that guitar to the case the first time and, you know, I played and I, I, I love that. The, the baritone, I did an arrangement of, uh, of Blackbird for a singer once and could never find the right key. So I was actually playing on acoustic and I just kept tuning it down. I was like, how's this, how's this, how's this? So I ended up in baritone range and I've just always, uh, you know, that was probably 16, 17 years ago. So I've always tried to have one kind of in my arsenal of things. It's just really good to be able to quickly go and grab a guitar it's got a completely different scale, a completely different range of, you know, where I, because I sing and, and write songs, it's, it's, uh, it's just a full throaty kind of thing. I just, uh, you know, uh, I love it. And whenever anybody picks it up or, you know, they, they see me play the baritone, they, you know, because it looks just like a telly from a distance, they go, oh, you know, what's, how's your telly so low? Or, you know, what are you, what are you playing? You know, what kind of strings are on it? But it's, you know, it's, it's great, and the the jazz master really started. I love uh, I love Elvis Costello, um, and oddly enough, I think there was a period of time when the guitar player in Incubus was playing him, and I just when he was playing him, I was like, that is a cool ass looking guitar. It just everything about it is is uh, it's like space age but retro at the same time, just the body shape. But I could never figure out the tone. I could never figure out what all the knobs and stuff were on it. Like I'd go in a store and pick one up and couldn't quite figure it out. But then once I figured out what all the knobs do and that it's not a Strat, it's not a Tele, it's not a Les Paul, it's got its own voice. Um, it's, so now it's just, it's just another color in my toolbox, in my, you know, in my, in my box of uh, many colors. I've been with John, I think six or seven years. Yeah. we. Uh, kind of bumped into each other in Atlanta. I was still living there and I think he was just kind of coming to town and you know setting up shop and we kind of befriended each other there. And, um, I, I was in a band called Brand New Immortals. We put out like this kind of rock record right about the time John put his first record out. And my stuff is like a, it's a it's a mix up of Bill Withers meets uh, Jeff Buckley meets Cheap Trick meets Hendrix. You know, I'm a soul singer, so anything I do has kind of got that that thing. But um, you know, it's really informed by all the stuff I grew up, you know, listening to as a kid. You know, I 
love stuff like that Radiohead, All I Need song that you know just went off. But I'm not quite that freaky and experimental or or cool. It's just like you know soul songs with more guitars. I am based in LA. And then how often do you play with your band? Um, when I'm when I'm not on the road with John, I try to do. There's a couple clubs where I try to do like a month long residency, and it'll be myself and Sean on bass and a couple guys, a couple other guys, Michael Chavez. Um, so we try to do that at least once or twice a year. And then in terms of like full on touring, it's been a while. I may go out in the spring. I'm gonna try to do a new record in the fall and winter, and then uh, go out in the spring. I, I would go out in the winter, but I can't fathom the idea of being in Toronto in January. This tour has been great. When I think about touring, it's always summer tour. I never think about arena tours or winter tours. It's always amphitheaters and people kicking beach balls around. So it's been, it's been great.